Believe it or not, mainstream science is starting to say things like, the Big Bang didn't happen, and general relativity is wrong? Yes, indeed, it is true. Mainstream science is starting to utter those words, the Big Bang may not have happened, and general relativity is wrong. In fact, that is becoming more common. And Adam Lohr sent me this link to a video that he made. He is a subscriber uh, to this channel. He's also a critical thinker, working on his own theory, a lattice theory, in fact. And he put this together and he says, Dave, can you take a look at it? And I said, fine, I will. And I really liked it. And it was very thought provoking. I thought this would make a great video. So he gave me permission to show this. So we're going to see this six, uh, almost seven minute video. It's called the No Bang Theory, Evidence Against the Big Bang. Let's take a look. What could possibly force a rational astrophysicist to believe that all the matter, energy, space, and time of the universe began 13 billion years ago, packed into a primeval fireball smaller than some infinitesimal fraction of the size of the point of a pin. And it's been expanding ever since. What could possibly bring someone to believe that? Measurements of helium abundance and the cosmic microwave background radiation provided convincing evidence in favor of the Big Bang picture of the very early universe. But although one can think of the Big Bang picture as a valid description of early times, it is wrong to take the Big Bang literally. That is, to think of Einstein's theory as providing a true picture of the origin of the universe. Here's the way I think you could turn into science. And it isn't science yet. If we had a, a theory of inflation, which we don't have, by the way, we don't have a good, th good fund based on fundamental particle physics. But let's say we had a particle physics theory that explained from first principles why the proton is 2,000 times heavier than the electron, why there are three generations of elementary particles, etc., etc., etc. And as part of that theory, inflation occurred naturally; it had to have occurred in the early universe. And one of the predictions is that there are other universes. So that I can test so many aspects of the theory, that those aspects I can't test, I really think are reasonable. So that's a way I think it could stop being metaphysics. And that's an important direction. If we can't go in that direction, then it will just be talk. And I agree with you, it'll just be talk. Because we still don't know the answer to the question, did the universe begin? You would sometimes get the impression that we know, because cosmologists like myself talking to a wider audience sometimes pretend that we know the answer to this, and there's a good reason why. We have a theory. And the problem with this is that the prediction that there's a beginning, or the understanding that there's a beginning, is based on general relativity, and we know general relativity is not right. The reason we know it's not right is because, for one thing, it predicts a singularity. It predicts that things are infinite, and we don't think that that can be true. Also, general relativity is not compatible with quantum mechanics, which we do think is right. So basically, we have a prediction that the universe began based on a theory we have no right to trust. <laughs> so the right answer is, we don't know yet. So although we can employ the equations of general relativity and our observations of the heavens to learn about the universe at a very young age, it is not correct to carry the Big Bang picture all the way back to the beginning. So it turns out if you calculate what is the likelihood of the universe to have emerged, full of this strange inflationary energy, uh, it's exponentially tiny. It's absolutely negligible. Some of them feature a beginning, a true first moment in time, but increasingly, many of them don't feature a beginning at all. They have an eternal universe that lasts infinitely far into the past and will stretch infinitely far into the future. My best guess is the universe did not have a beginning. I worry that if the universe had a beginning, then we're stuck being unable to solve some of the puzzles about why the early universe looks the way it does. Unfortunately, the theory is extremely adjustable and <laughs> malleable because the precise nature of the spring basically um, is, is up to you. It's up to the modeler. And so the theory you know, can be adjusted to fit most observations. We may have to give up falsifiability for inflation. We may never be able to find anything 
that unambiguously tells us inflation happened, but we still may think we're doing good physics. Anything that happens in the universe at early times will produce a signal that is identical to that from inflation. However, we have absolutely no reason to think that classical general relativity is an appropriate and correct description of what is happening near the Big Bang. We should not think of, of the Big Bang as the beginning of the universe. We should think it as the end of our understanding of what is happening. We need to do a better job, at the very least, the theory of quantum gravity before we can actually draw conclusions about what happened at that moment. Inflation solves a number of vexing problems with the Big Bang theory. So well, in fact, that most cosmologists accept that something like this must have happened, even though we don't have any direct evidence for it. I don't know if the universe came from nothing or began. The point is we don't have any evidence absolutely that the universe began. Even Alex Vilenkin in that paper said it began probably. The, 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 the very papers that, that, he's talk, that, that William Craig's talked about, in fact, are based on general relativity, which we know breaks down as a quantum theory. And in fact, those presuppositions that there must be a singularity or a beginning, there are many theories like blue quantum gravity, some areas of string theory, uh, and the ecbriotic universe that in fact produce an eternal universe that contracts and expands forever and has been around forever. That is consistent with the known laws. We don't know the answer and it, we're excited because we don't know the answer because we've got something to learn. That is my, that is my, based on what I, the, the physics that I know, I'd say it's a more likely possibility. Yeah, right. But it doesn't say the universe had a beginning. The general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct. What happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter and then the matter suddenly, somehow, created? How did that happen? In many cultures, the customary answer is that a God or gods created the universe out of nothing. But if we wish to pursue this question courageously, we must, of course, ask the next question. Where did God come from? If we decide that this is an unanswerable question, why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question? Or, if we say that God always existed, why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed, that there's no need for a creation, it was always here. These are not easy questions. Cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries, with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth. So let's, let's examine what was said in this video. And again, I thank Adam Lore for uh, sending me this. And let's, let's take a look. Big bang problems. Well, what banged, how, why, those kinds of questions. More philosophical questions. This is a question I think everybody has when they think of the big bang. And you have Michio Kaku and Carl Sagan at the end sort of bookending this whole video. And uh, it says the no bang theory. That, again, when you just think about how is it that everything was in one little place, place and then exploded. All the questions that raises is, is really becoming, in even mainstream science, an obstacle. And people are starting to say, this is a real question, and we should question the, the theory of the Big Bang. Mainstream says general relativity is wrong because it predicts singularities. Of course, the mathematics means as you get uh, to, a, for instance, in the center of a black hole, General relativity says there's an infinite point with infinite mass. Now, again, that just doesn't make any physical sense to anybody, and that's starting to be questioned. And then at the, also at the Big Bang, people talked about, well, general relativity would say there's sort of a singularity there as well, and the questioning of singularities is now becoming more accepted in mainstream. Uh, it says that there are, uh, general relativity breaks down at those singularities. It is incompatible. They also say it's not compatible with quantum mechanics, and we think quantum mechanics is correct. I really like that one guy saying, the one scientist or professor, whoever he was, sitting in his office saying, you know, we think, and quantum, it, uh, we know, we think that quantum mechanics, in fact, is correct. He said, think, and that's the way a critical mind should be. Th always saying it. We think the Big Bang is correct. We think that the, this model, this new model is correct. And of course, they also say that inflation has no justification. That is the, the inflation that 
uh, is going on in the universe that people say that they're, they're, they don't seem to see the evidence for that. And uh, we also have papers uh, like that as well. So those are the things mainstream is saying, which is quite shocking, actually. So what do they uh, end up uh, concluding? Uh, what, what were these videos that uh, Adam had put together? Well, they're saying basically throw out the Big Bang and perhaps even throw out general relativity, although they are saying, well, we are maybe we can save that one. So there's a sort of uh, mix between whether a general relativity, well, that seems to work in most of the universe, but it doesn't work at these place, these particular singularities where some people say, well, maybe we should throw it out. It's just wrong. And other people say, well, maybe we can use it. And in fact, that's what they say that one guy said, well, we could use it in our new theories, which is trying to solve these problems. Uh, now the okay, the Big Bang's not there. We have an eternal universe. And it turns out that the loop quantum gravity or string theory gives us more of a model for the for an eternal universe. Now, that's interesting. Uh, I will talk about that a little bit, but the loop quantum gravity, what is that? That's trying to take general relativity and putting it together with quantum mechanics and making something out of it. Now, of course, we in uh, the outside of the mainstream do not think general relativity is correct, that gravity is not caused by space-time bending. So we throw that out. So to put that together with quantum quantum mechanics to make a quantum a loop quantum gravity, um, we, don't, we just don't buy that. Also, quantum mechanics itself is super problematic, and it's just because they have no model for what they're doing. They think they're sending a particle, or uh, they think they're sending photons. They don't know if it's a wave or a particle, uh, and they get completely messed up as to really what's happening. And we have new models that aren't part of not, neither string theory, no, ne uh, neither uh, loop quantum gravity that would explain that. But these are the new theories they're talking about. And this is where, in my opinion, they, the downfall is still there. They're still stumbling. And that is they are throwing away perhaps two things that they should be throwing away, which is uh, the Big Bang Theory and uh, um, general relativity. But they're, key, they're trying to then put it together in some way and call it the loop quantum. And they're using the string theory, which we know was invented. The people who invented it said it was an invention and it should not be taken seriously. And they are now rolling in their graves. And also they complained while they were uh, many of them are alive still saying they can't believe that people treat this as real. And most people don't treat the string theory, theory as real. Uh, finally, they say, well, there's an eternal universe that is it's eternal, the universe, uh, uh, that it did not have a beginning, it will not have an end, and, or maybe it has endless cycles and maybe the Big Bang ha sort of happens like this brain idea, bring, and it explodes and then contracts, whatever. But those are sort of the conclusions. But the eternal universe seems to be talked about a lot more, which we in the dissident science and people outside the mainstream are totally comfortable with. Now, what do critical thinkers say about the Big Bang? Well, we agree with the new mainstream that the Big Bang didn't happen, and that's starting to be said. And they're not saying, well, we're going to keep parts of it. That one they seem to want to throw out wholesale. And there, we also have a simil similar philo uh, philosophical questions about when and where and why, which I talked about in the beginning. We have those same questions. We think I think everybody who hears of the Big Bang will have that. Uh, we have the redshift alternative explanations to their what they call um, um, expansion that's going on and uh, we talk about uh, the reason the Big Bang was first postulated and that was because they saw redshift and they said well redshift must be because all the stars are moving away that shows that they're all going away from each other that looks like they came from a point so there must have been a big bang in fact the big bang was a derogatory name that was given to this theory and the, uh, this idea in the beginning so we look at redshift and say redshift that we see we have to explain, but it's not because of the inflationary uh, universe, which they also say isn't happening. So we look about the uh, at the inflation a little bit differently. We go back to the redshift, and I believe that they avoid that. And you didn't hear anything about redshift because they don't explain it. They don't. We st mainstream science still is very bad at knowing what gravity really is, what light really is, and what redshift could be. So they seem to avoid it, rightly so, because they have no idea what's going on there. Uh, and then, of course, mainstream 
com uh, completely ignores this, uh, uh, ig ignores this redshift, and that's what I just talked about. And lots more reasons for no Big Bang. In fact, I'm um, going to be, George Coyne has 60 reasons in his book. He's getting a second edition out there, so you'll be able to get that. And I'll be interviewing George Coyne on that uh, as well. He'll be on our website as well with arguments against the Big Bang, along with Borkert on science woke.org so go there sign up coming out may 1st what a critical thinker say about general what's wrong with general re relativity well singularity is impossible this is agreed upon space time has no physicality they don't talk about that too much because they talk about quantum phone and stuff I, that part of it they you didn't hear anything about uh, uh that when they talked about general relativity they're only talking about singularities space time makes no philosophical sense space is a place where mass is in movement and to put it together with time that makes no sense time's a concept space is a place for mass it makes no sense most of us outside the mainstream all sort of agree with that it makes no philosophical sense and its main prediction of bending light is incorrect and of course if you uh look right up here you have a nasa scientist who is a member of our our, our group he's dr edward dowdy he was from nasa worked with laser optical uh, sightings and he says that in fact when you look at starlight outside the corona of the sun it doesn't bend even though general relativity says it should bend Finally, critical thinkers' conclusions on mainstreams abandoning the Big Bang and general relativity. Well, we say quantum mechanics is, is wrong, so it will not be the answer. That is not going to be loop quantum gravity. Uh, combining the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong GR theory and quantum mechanics and loop quantum, like I said, is compounding very bad ideas. So even though they're talking about, oh, we should abandon the Big Bang and general relativity is all screwed up, well, we are going to try to put it together in these two, this one uh, uh, loop quantum gravity. You can look it up on the Internet. And the first thing, one of the first things that says is trying to put together general relativity and quantum mechanics. And we outside the mainstream think they're both very bad ideas. And of course, the same conclusion I seem to always come to, and that is we need a physical model based on logical principles, not trying to combine or tweak existing theories uh, that are internally inconsistent, what uh, is, is called not consuponable. I love that word. That's my favorite word from Dr. Glenn Borkert in the beginning. I really didn't. He kept saying, and I said, I got to really figure out uh, what he means by that and it makes basically inconsistent that's consuponable means if you have a theory the part a particle model a lattice model an ether model or a structure model that theory must be self-consistent and yes it must match everything that's going on in the universe which is one of the stupid things that we hear from people in mainstream saying you you guys just ignore stuff in the universe and make your own models that's exactly wrong we're trying to make models explain things that mainstream can't and everything it can but everything it can as well but thank you so much again adam lore uh i, I thank you very much for making those videos take check it out it's down there below right down here in the link the area i put the um the comment the description area i put the link and remember what i always say stay critical stay thinking i'm david d hilster I am your science therapist trying to get you the promised land of becoming science woke. Ciao for now.